Robert, let's start today with the government shutdown. We're coming up to a month of having the government shut down. Let's talk about the effects this is having on the economy. Yes, Susan. Uh, absolutely uh, critical conditions for the households involved. Uh, nearly 800,000 uh, workers and their families have gone without one paycheck, and, and hopefully they won't go without two, but it may end up there. Um, and we're starting to see more uh, indirect effects to the broader economy. Certainly, we have the direct effect from the paychecks. We have the sand in the gears in terms of slower permitting and other government processes. But the indirect effects, I think, are showing up in that the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index uh, tick down. We've seen business confidence ticking down as well. And it's really hard to measure and quantify this, but the directions are clear that uh, that the government shutdown is weighing on people's minds, and uh, that is going to encourage a little more conservative behavior out there. At the same time, we're seeing lots of other risk factors starting to bubble up. So it's just compounding the sense of unease uh, that many are feeling about the economy uh, looking forward down the road farther into 2019. Let's talk about information we have now with uh, labor data. We did get some positive labor data. So right now we're not seeing negative effects of the government shutdown with what we have now, correct? Yes. In the uh, initial claims for unemployment insurance, those were good uh, going into early January. The federal government part of that, we did see an increase in claims from federal government workers. We're going to see more of that over the next couple of weeks. And I am still concerned about the next payroll jobs number that we get. And that'll be the January data that will be released on the first Friday of February. And the government shutdown and the furloughs associated with that should show up in, in the February payroll numbers. And we could go from a whale of a jobs report in December to a guppy or a minnow in, in February. So we should be ready for that. Robert, let's move on to some other data that was released today, starting with the producer price index, and how did energy prices affect that? Yes, energy was a drag uh, on both producer price index and consumer price index in December, with oil getting down close to 45 bucks. We're now up into the low 50s, and if the market can hold this, then that drag will go away. But uh, inflation is definitely on the back burner right now and is, is not motivating the Fed, not pushing the Fed toward more rate hikes. So I think that uh, that low uh, energy price, low inflation story is, is very important now to think about what the Fed is going to do going forward. And speaking of the Fed, let's talk about the comments that came from the New York Fed office this week. Yes, John Williams, a formerly president of the San Francisco Fed, and now he's president of the New York Fed. And he sort of ranks above the other regional Fed presidents because the New York Fed is the, the office that actually does all the open market operations that get discussed in Washington, the buying and selling of financial instruments to, uh, to enact monetary policy. So when Williams speaks, we all listen. And uh, he reinforced that word patient today, and uh, meaning uh, that the Fed is likely to skip one, two, maybe a couple more meetings, FOMC meetings, before they raise interest rates next. So uh, that, uh, that reinforces my earlier comments, where I think the very earliest we'll see a rate hike from the Fed now is April, probably even later. So the Fed's, uh, the Fed's word is patient, and that's going to mean you know, several more meetings before the next rate hike. 